Hey gang, hope you're doing well. I want to talk about boosting your tempo runs in a couple different ways and kind of being creative with them to really, really enhance your training. Okay, and it doesn't matter whether you're a middle distance runner or a distance runner. Okay, I coach both. I've coached both for a long time and I use these for all my athletes. And I hope it's something that you'll consider incorporating if you don't do so, if you don't do it yet. So this is a very vital part of the training that can really, really enhance everything that you do. So, um, by the way, I don't know if you've seen my video recently, I did the magic of 400 meter repeats. I'm going to do a part two this coming week. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, if you like good content. Like, I don't want you to miss all this stuff. And I've got 300 videos for you already on this channel. I don't want you missing valuable tidbits of information. Um, but that was a pretty popular video, so I'm going to do a part two of that one. And that's going to come out this week. So if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the content and the bell icon so you don't miss other videos. So but with that, let's get back to this. So you have your aerobic threshold, which is essentially something a uh, pace that you can run comfortably hard for about 50 to 60 minutes. That's generally closer to between half marathon and marathon pace. Then you have the anaerobic threshold, which is a run to uh, that I build up for about 20 to 25 minutes over time. That's generally between 10k and half marathon pace. So it's a little bit, a little bit of a different pace. But again, they both serve their purpose. Okay, anaerobic threshold uh, I use for a lot of middle distance runners and even distance runners as well um, when it becomes a little bit more race specific but this is an important component of training especially for people who run the half mile and the mile and stuff like that and you really want to enhance everything that you do this is an important part of training so if you want to know how to build it up over time I've got a video on that how to build towards a 20 to 25 minute tempo in pieces take a look at it okay um, and if you want a video on how to dis determine the right training paces you know, where, where, do you, where, where am I supposed to be training? Where am I running supposed to be training? Well, I've got a video on that. There's two videos, actually. A one-mile time trial. Test your athlete's fitness or your fitness. See where you're at. And then you can determine your training paces based on what you run there. And when to run the one-mile time trial, too, is important as well. So def I would definitely encourage you to watch that video. And then how to set your training paces based on what you run for the one-mile time trial. Because it will tell you all the intel that you need to know for stuff like this and how to build these thresholds, how to build these tempos, which can be an important part of the puzzle. But now, how to enhance it? There are some things that I do. Let's just say we're using the 20 minutes as an example here, I'm breaking it up into two pieces, two times a 10 minute. And that's generally something you can do early in the season as well for runners who are still building up over time. Um, but you could also do a 10 minute tempo, take a three minute recovery, and then run a fast 400, right? Take another three minute recovery. Then you do your 10 minute tempo again. Now you get your 20 minutes, and then on the back end, take it three minutes and do another 400. Now you're infusing speed, okay, hard acceleratory running within the tempo, okay? You could also flip it. You could do the 400-meter effort first. And let's just say it's between 5K and 3K pace or whatever, right? Then you do a tempo. Then you, you do 400. Then you do a tempo. So it's simulating, and you'd be surprised at how much, sim uh, how much more comfortable the tempo pace feels after you've done that 400-meter effort. So... It allows you to settle in a little bit before, and this is obviously after a good, a good warm up and drills and strides and all those other things, all those other things. And again, on the flip side, the 400 meter efforts help you simulate turning over when you're fatigued from a tiny, kind of kind of tempo run. So, and once you get to the point where you're doing a 20 minute consecutive or even a 25 minute consecutive tempo, you really know what it feels like to accelerate on the back end, especially if you do that tempo and then you do, let's just say, a 400 or even a 321, 300, 200, 100 on the back end, some turnover cut down work after the tempo all good things but that's how to kind of, that's how to kind of enhance the tempo too you could also and let's just say the tempo run for you is six minute per mile just an arbitrary number right um you're doing a 20 minute tempo run at six minutes per mile halfway through you could take that six minute and just put it up for a half mile take it down to like 545 to 550 elevate the tempo a little bit and then come back to your tempo run is another way of doing it too okay or you could also elevate the last half mile of the tempo run you could put this in different places you can do it in the middle you can do it in the end so it helps you simulate again accelerating at the end of these tempo runs it simulates a race scenario and that's one of the things that we want to do with these tempo runs and again as long as you stay within the prescribed pace ranges you're not going to exceed that red line to go anaerobic and that's the key Staying at that line and just below it will allow you to ma maximize the benefits of these runs, but also recover properly 
from these runs. And that's the key, too. You want to be able to come back in a couple days and do a different type of workout that's complementary or race or whatever it might be. So training at the right uh, uh, pace ranges is very, very, very important. And, and again, not exceeding that red line. Okay, and keep in mind, too, over time, if you start to incorporate this and other things, your easy runs, let's just say your easy runs are eight minutes now, right? And it's comfortable, and your heart rate's whatever, 130 beats per minute. In six months' time or whatever, those easy runs might be 730, and it's going to feel the same way that the eight minutes felt, and it's going to be the same heart rate. That's a sign of progress, and that's what happens when you start to incorporate things like tempos, thresholds, speed developments, other types of workouts, and whatnot. So the benefits of these are short-term and long-term. So... It's definitely something I, I highly encourage you to incorporate in a lot of different ways. And again, you could do this in different pieces too, right? You could do a 10-minute tempo and then 5 by 50 meter uphill runs or 5 by 100 meter uphill runs. Then a 10-minute 10 10, uh, 10 tempo, not 10 miles, 10-minute 10 tempo. And then 5 by 100 meter uphill runs again. That's another way of incorporating speed within the tempo when you're broken up into pieces. And then if you pack it together for a consecutive run, then you can do 100 meter flats or 100 meters uh, uphill runs if you want on the back end of it to simulate turning over. This is something you can also alternate. Let's just say you do the tempo runs every every other week. Um, you know, the one week you can do uphill sprints after the tempo and then the next time you do the tempo you could do flat sprints. It's a great a great way of kind of incorporating stuff early season to mid season, especially if you're training for the marathon or half marathon or even cross country. It's a great way of incorporating it too. But there's a lot of different ways you can maximize this tempo and, and also you know, without making it boring, okay? Because it is a mental feat. It's you know, you're learning how to become mentally focused, mentally tenacious with this stuff. Because locking in for an extended period of time is not always the easiest thing in the world. Well, it's just a way of kind of, you know, giving it a little bit of variety to help you get to the point where you can maximize it and stay focused in a short burst, in a short burst, right? Or in a short period of time. So, just wanted to give you some variety. Let me know what you think of that. Is this stuff that you do, okay? How do you, uh, you know, how do you enhance your tempo runs? Because ideally, you I mean we want to we want to maximize the benefit of the run, but without going lactic, right? Without going anaerobic, we want to be able to diffuse it, buffer it, whatever you want to call it, absorb it, and then spit it out. So um, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but this is kind of generally how to do a sustained, long, hard run without going anaerobic, and that's the key. Because if you go anaerobic, and it starts to affect your um, recovery for the next day and the next workout and so on. So, and that's the one, the one, the last things we want to do. We want to keep you in the right training pace ranges so that you can get what you need out of the workout and keep it moving forward while still progressing. So, uh, I would definitely encourage you to incorporate this in a, in a training program, especially and it'll help make it well balanced. And obviously, you add some speed development, you add some other things in, in the training program, and now you've got the makings of a nice, well balanced training plan here. So if you want to see how this stuff is laid out within a full training program, take a look at my programs. Okay, they're all in there. Half mile programs all the way up to the marathon. All levels. So you, and you'll see how tempo runs are broken down. I mean, you might find something there that you like. You might find something there that you want to customize yourself. You've got plenty of content, plenty of stuff on here that you can just dissect and turn into your own, if you're, especially if you're a coach. So I hope you found this helpful. Again, if you did, hit the thumbs up. And please share this with other runners and coaches that you think might benefit from this. So it's greatly appreciated. And uh, I will keep it coming. And keep in mind, uh, the next video coming out is the Magic of 400 Meter Repeats Part 2. If you want to see Part 1, it's in the description down below. I'll keep it coming. Have a good day, guys.